In this lesson, we are going to discuss plate tectonics. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to explain the current positions of the continents and major bodies of water using the theory of plate tectonics. Have you ever wondered why plane tickets are very expensive? For example, a non promo fare from the Philippines going to Vietnam may cost 6,219 pesos. From New York to Morocco, a non promo fare may cost 27,012 pesos. A flight from Perth, Australia going to Bangladesh may cost 60,056 pesos and would require a connecting flight in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And lastly, a flight from Buenos Aires, Argentina going to Cape Town in South Africa may cost 37,749 pesos and would require connecting flights in Brazil and Angola. Aside from the fuel charges, taxes, and other air transportation fees, one major reason why flights are expensive is because of the distance caused by the big bodies of water. If the continents can be connected like puzzle pieces, the selected locations can be accessed using land transportation. Fare would also be significantly cheaper. In fact, this illustration of the continents as puzzle pieces are what scientists believe to be the former appearance of the continents. Here we have South America. Above it is North America. The western coastline of Africa perfectly feeds to the eastern side of South America. Its northeastern coastline fits the coastline of North America. Europe is sandwiched by North America on the left and Asia on this right. Some portions of Asia were believed to have originated in the southern hemisphere. Below the fragment of Asia are Australia and Antarctica. But how is it possible for these continents to be in their current locations if they are said to perfectly fit each other? It is now believed that the continents do not move on their own. Rather, they are carried by slabs which are called tectonic plates. These are slabs or blocks in the lithosphere which allow the continents to move in various velocities. By the movement of the continents, new bodies of water and land masses are formed. This map shows the plates that move the continents. Plates can either be primary or major, or secondary or minor depending on its size. The primary plates include the following. First, the North American plate which includes most of the North American continent, Greenland which is politically a part of Europe, and the northeasternmost tip part of Russia. Second, the South American plate which includes the entire South American continent. Third, the African plate which includes the African continent. Fourth, the Eurasian plate which includes Europe and most of the Asian continent except for the Middle Eastern region, India, and a small portion of the Indonesian archipelago. The fifth primary plate is the Indo-Australian plate which derived its name from Australia and a small portion of the Indonesian archipelago. The sixth primary plate is the Antarctic plate found at the southernmost pole of the Earth. The six primary plates derive their names from the continents which they drag as they move. However, one primary plate is responsible for the largest ocean. This is the Pacific Plate. For the secondary plates, Juan de Fuca is seated on the western side of the North American Plate. The Cocos Plate is on the northwestern portion of the South American Plate. The Caribbean Plate is in between the North and South American Plates. The Nazca Plate is in between the Pacific and South American Plates. This plate is debated if it should be primary or secondary because of its size. This shows the arbitrary classification of plates. The Scotia Plate is in between the South American and Antarctic Plates. The Arabian Plate includes the Arabian Peninsula. The Indian Plate includes the Indian subcontinent. And lastly, in between the Eurasian and Pacific Plates lies the Philippine Plate since it borders the Philippine Archipelago. The tectonic plates are not limited to these plates. There are also tertiary and even smaller and newer plates which cannot be visualized in this map. The movement of these tectonic plates is theorized as the continental drift theory. It is postulated by Alfred Wegener. He argued that the continents originally came from a big landmass due to the geological characteristics of these continents. This big landmass is a supercontinent called Pangaea. Pangaea was a supercontinent during the Permian period of the Paleozoic era. It is surrounded by the superocean named Pantalasa. During the Triassic period, Pangaea started to break apart and slowly drifted vertically. It gave way to the formation of the Tethys Sea which gave a distinction between the two sub-supercontinents of Pangaea. The part which drifted to the north is Laurasia, the part which drifted to the south is Gondwana or Gondwana Land. 
The two big continents of Pangaea continued to drift away from each other, both vertically and horizontally, during the Jurassic period. This is when the present continents can be distinguished from each other. A chunk of Gondwana started to move upwards. During the Cretaceous period, significant horizontal separations were evident. The chunk which separated from Gondwana continuously drifted to the north until it collided with the Eurasian plate as seen in the present formation of the continents. At present day, the formerly disconnected North and South America have a narrow connection. The separation of Asia from North America and Africa from South America gave rise to the Atlantic Ocean. The separation of South America, Africa, and Antarctica gave rise to the Southern or Antarctic Ocean. It is also evident that Australia drifted from Antarctica. The chunk which collided to the Eurasian plate is the present Indian subcontinent. The ocean it created is the Indian Ocean. With the present positions of the continents, Laurasia is said to be composed of North America and Eurasia. On the other hand, Gondwana was composed of South America, Africa, Antarctica, Australia, and the Indian subcontinent. These plates are continuously moving as evident in the numerous earthquakes which happen around the world every day. To end this lesson, let us review the following key points. The Earth's surface is made up of dynamic tectonic plates or lithospheric slabs which move continents. The continental drift theory argues that the continents are continuously moved by plates. And lastly, the supercontinent Pangaea broke apart which gave rise to Laurasia and Gondwana. These continents then gave rise to the present continents and oceans. And that ends our discussion on plate tectonics.